In this video, we're going to talk about the requirements for your development environment for this course. So what we want to do is have an operating system that supports Java development. Obviously, uh, this is going to be all the major operating systems out there, Mac OS, Windows, or Linux. I'm saying you probably want at least 8 gig of memory. Uh, 16 would be a little more comfortable, a little faster, but you should be able to get by with uh, just 8 gig. And we are going to be using Java 11 or higher. So uh, everything's going to be developed under Java 11. But if you're on a higher version, you should be okay. If you are on a lower version, you may run into issues. So I do recommend if you're lower than Java 11 to update to uh, Java 11. And you do need to have the JDK installed specifically. Now the, the JRE, the Java runtime, you do need the JDK. As far as the flavor of the JDK, Oracle or OpenJDK should be just fine. And then we are going to be getting into Docker. Uh, you do want to have Docker Engine installed. And I'm saying uh, 20.10.0 or higher. Uh, that should be perfectly fine for this course. And then we are going to be building Java. We will be using Maven specifically. And you should have uh, Maven 3.6.0 or higher. And ideally uh, have that installed for command line use. That will make your life a little bit easier. And if you have any doubts on that, you can uh, read the official Maven Apache Maven documentation. They, they do a pretty good job of explaining how to set that up for your specific uh, environment. So you do want to take a moment to verify your uh, environment. And this can be uh, very simply to go verify that Java is installed, so Java version. And then we want to make sure that the JDK is also installed, so that's Java C version. That will tell us that the Java compiler is available on the command line. Maven, we can just do Maven minus V. That will show us the Maven version installed. And then we can run a simple Docker command, make sure that the Docker engine is up and running. And that's simply Docker PS, and that will show us any running containers. Now, I do use, uh, for the source code examples, I do use IntelliJ Ultimate. Uh, this is going to be used throughout the course, but it is not a requirement. You do not need uh, IntelliJ Ultimate to go along with the code examples in this. I do develop everything to be IDE agnostic, meaning it doesn't matter uh, what ID or any ID that you use. Maven is the build tool. We will have a Maven build file and we'll be able to build the project using Maven. So if you're using uh, STS Eclipse or NetBeans or some other ID, uh, perfectly fine. As long as it supports Maven, you're good to go. And worst case, you can always use Maven from the command line to, to build through the example. So again, IntelliJ Ultimate is not required to complete the course. It's just uh, my preference of the ID to use. Now that your environment is properly set up and we've got Docker up and running, everything's happy, we are going to go in and start working with a Spring Boot project. First, I'm going to show you a project uh, that we will be working with in this course. This is a ready-made Spring Boot project. This course is not specifically on Spring Boot, assuming that you are a Spring developer, so we'll go through. We've got a little Spring Boot application that we can work with for the purposes of deploying with Docker. Uh, and then we will start looking at a basic Docker build file as to how we build up that Docker image. And we'll go through the step-by-step, -step, uh, taking from a, a Maven project that's producing the good old Spring Boot fat jar, uh, and then getting that into a Docker image and running it inside of Docker. So we will cover that in the step in this course step-by-step. -step. In this video, we are going to do a code review of the Spring Boot application that we are going to be working with. On the screen here, you can see that I have an API definition. So the Spring Boot application that we are going to be working with in this course is a, a simple Spring MVC uh, REST type application. Here I have a, a beer service, and you can see that we've implemented endpoints for list beers, create beer, uh, get beer by ID, update beer by ID, uh, delete beer by ID, and then also get beer by UPC. So uh, a variety of RESTful style operations that we can work with. This API documentation, I will leave a link to it in the course resources. And then the implementation that we are going to be working with in the course is here. It's under KBE REST Brewery. So this is a uh, Spring Boot project that implements that RESTful API, and I will also leave a link to this in the course resources. Now, I do want to prefix this. The course is for people that already know how to uh, develop Spring, so I'm not going to be teaching 
how to build a Spring REST API. That's uh, well covered in other content I have, and a lot of other people cover that as well. So to proceed, you do need to understand fundamental uh, Spring MVC creating RESTful APIs. But I do want to go through and do a quick code review to get you orientated to the Spring Boot project that we are going to be working with in the course. I'm going to toggle over to IntelliJ where I have the project uploaded. So here I'm in IntelliJ. This is the uh, checked out project from GitHub. And I want to do just a, a code review on this. So first, let's take a look at the dependencies. So here is the Maven Palm. Let me scroll up to the top here. Uh, we are using Spring Boot version 2.4.5. That is the uh, most recent version at the time of recording of Spring Boot. And you can see here in the properties, we are using Java 11. I am using Mapstruct and Project Lombok on that. More on those in a little bit. I do want to look, look at the uh, Spring dependencies. We are bringing in Spring Starter for Actuator. Web, that is going to be Web MVC, not Web Flux. Uh, we have the Starter for uh, Spring Data JPA. So that's going to bring, bring in Data, or JPA, and Hibernate. That's the ORM that we will be using. And then... Uh, we are explicitly bringing in validation. Uh, there was a recent change to Spring Boot where the starter uh, validation was previously included in uh, web within, I forget the exact version, within the last year or so, that is no longer included. So you do have to uh, bring those in. And if you forget, and this is one of those things that might uh, fail silently where the validation is not getting picked up, uh, that can be a, a problem because you forget that and then your validation silently fails to fails to work. Then you can see on line 50, we are bringing in H2. Uh, we will be utilizing the H2 in memory database dev tools. Can we see Project Lombok, MapStruct, and then uh, our test dependencies. Here, let's go up to the build plugins. We do have the Spring Boot Maven plugin because I am using a, a different version of Lombok than what's being curated. I am excluding that from the Maven plugin, so that doesn't get automatically built in. And here's a, a important part. If you're not familiar with MapStruct and Project Lombok, you do need to configure Maven like this to add in these annotation processors. I can't remember if the sequence uh, is important, but it's important to have these annotation processors there. I would recommend try keeping the same sequence here because I know this works. If you have a different sequence, I don't know if that, that will work. And then finally, on line 115, I want to point out, this is a compiler argument, and this is what tells MapStruct to annotate the generated mappers with a Spring component annotation so that those mappers get brought in as Spring Boot components, and we can do dependency injection on them. Without that, the project will fail to work properly. So let's come in here. I do want to take a look at the beer loader under Bootstrap. So this is going to be implementing the Spring Boot command line runner. What this does, uh, it initializes our H2 in memory database with uh, 30 different beer objects. So we, you scroll down, you can see the various beers that I am uh, loading up into the, the database. It just gives us some data. So every time we bring up the application, they get initialized into the database. Speaking of the database, we are using uh, traditional JPA here. I'm not going to be covering JPA specifically, but you can go through, we can see that we are using Project Lombok annotations uh, for data. Also, the builder pattern is being implemented, as well as a variety of JPA annotations for the UID and whatnot. Uh, this is the what's getting persisted to the database. Now, we do have here, we are using a DTO model. So, I do have uh, MapStruct mappers defined to convert from the database entity to a DTO. So, the DTOs are kept under the model directly. And all that works pretty pretty well. Uh, coming from the, the ground up, we are using Spring Data, Spring Data JPA re repositories. We are following the repository pattern, so we do have a repository defined that is utilized in our services. So we do have an interface that we are coding to that does the basic uh, CRUD operations for us. And then here you can see the actual implementation of the service. Let me close down some of these packages real quick. And then finally, we do have a Spring MVC controller. So this is what's going to be handling the web request. That takes in an instance of the beer service to support the CRUD operations. And we can see that we are using uh, basic Spring MVC uh, mapping. So we have 
request mapping the path, parameters are being set up, and all that's being handled by Spring MVC. And then we are following through using our, our service. Our service is going to be handling that. The service takes care of working with the database and then using the MapStruct mappers to uh, convert to and from the web-facing DTO objects. So let's go ahead and I'm going to run this application. From IntelliJ, if you're using that, you just come up and uh, say run. Oh, just going to do a stop and rerun there. Sorry, I had it running in the background already. And here you can see the basic initialization. And I do want to point out here you can see that there is a console output saying that we've initialized the database. So at this point, we're running on port 8080. You can see that a couple lines above. Uh, the API documentation, we could utilize that uh, to use Postman or something and exercise those uh, CRUD operations against port 8080 on localhost. So we'd have 30 beers loaded into the H2 in memory database, and then those RESTful APIs are now exposed and working. And if you want to take a moment on your own and go through and utilize a tool like Postman or Curl to exercise the API just to see, that, see those working to prove that it does work at this point, uh, go ahead. I encourage you to do so but I'm not going to be covering that specifically in the course. You should be able to start the application at this point. What this will do is tell you that you checked it out and you have your environment set up properly. It is building and it is coming up and functioning properly. Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a very basic Docker file for our project. Now, one thing I like to do is as I work through these courses, if you're not familiar with taking any of my courses, I will create a new branch. So I'm going to come in here and add in a new branch. I'm just going to call this Docker Base. So we were previously on the main branch. Now we are going to Docker Base. And this gives you the ability to see exactly what was changed in this video. So I will be doing that for the uh, remaining videos where I'm uh, actually changing code and you'll be getting a, a new branch. So you can do a compare of your code to a specific branch and see uh, what was changed or what you're missing. So very handy uh, tool to give you. So now I am on uh, Docker base and let's go ahead and set up a, a Docker file. Now there's a couple different ways that you can approach this. I'm going to put things under the main folder for the Maven uh, project structure. Some people, when they're doing projects, especially if they're using a, a build script, they'll put it in the, the Docker file into the root of the project, which is perfectly fine. That is a, a valid way of doing that. But here, I'm just going to show you a, a typical setup where I'm going to come in here and I'm going to say uh, new package. I'm going to call this Docker base. And let's go ahead and create a new Docker file. And by convention, that is capitalized. So Docker file, all lowercase. And I will be adding that to the branch. And here I'm going to show you just a, a very basic vanilla uh, Docker file for running our Spring Boot application. So I'm going to say from open JDK. You can see I'm getting the autocomplete there from IntelliJ. I'm going to say J, JRE. And I want the slim build. So uh, this is a, a more... Uh, efficient. And to be honest, you see, I'm, I'm getting uh, code complete for Buster, Sid, and Stretch. I, I honestly don't know what those are. So I do know the uh, slim build is a, a more efficient uh, image. It doesn't have a lot of the tooling in there. So it's a, a very small, lightweight uh, image for us to work with. It does have the JRE, the Java runtime. So we are going to be putting in a uh, jar file. So that is already compiled. So we don't need the JDK. The JRE is much smaller. Uh, so we have a much smaller image that we're going to be working with. And here we want to set up some environment. I'm going to steal from my, uh, my working file here to the clipboard. And I'm just going to paste this in from my clipboard. And here I'm setting an environment variable, Java ops, and I'm setting up some uh, memory limits for the JVM. And then this uh, security from memory that, that goes through and helps initialize the JVM quicker uh, and improves the startup time by setting that. I'm going to say workdir application. Now the uh, trick is we need to copy uh, into our file. 
So we're going to be copying into the image that we're building in our Docker build script. And what we want to do is we don't have it here yet. So if you don't see it, we want to run the package command. So in the lifecycle, we want to run package or verify either one of those or install. But package is the minimal one that we uh, need. So I'm going to go ahead and package that so that we do, in fact, get the uh, jar built. And that does run our test as well. So we, we only have, uh, I think, one test out there that brings up the context of a pretty lightweight project. Oh, so we actually have four tests. I misspoke. So now what we want to do is copy. And this copy command is going to be relative to the location of the Docker file. So we need to go up a couple directories. And then we want to say, should be getting a target. Oh, it's not seeing it as a project file. And I see what I made, made a mistake. I actually put this um, here. I want that under main. Let me do that quick refactor. So we have that under main. I mistakenly put it under Java, which is our uh, class files. So we do not want that there. Now we're getting target in the autocomplete. And we can see that we have these two. So the dot original is the uh, slim jar. We want the uh, fat jar. So that is going to be the executable jar there. So we'll go ahead and take that. And that tells us to copy it, and we are going to copy it into the work directory. So the dot slash is saying copy it into the working directory of application. And then we want to do entry point. Now we're going to pass it a, a command line. So we're going to say Java. And here we want to give it the name of the jar. So uh, this is a little lengthy and easy to mistype, so I'm going to copy that to the clipboard and we'll paste that in. So this is a, a very minimal uh, Docker file for running the Spring Boot application. So at the top, we are saying the Docker image that we want to pull from, the JRE Slim. We are setting environment variable for Java Ops. We're just setting some memory limits and then the security. That helps with our application startup time. We are telling it the working directory called application. We are copying from our local uh, file system. So we are doing a relative path there uh, to target to the generated jar file. And we are copying that into our Docker image. And then we are setting the entry point. And this is the command that is going to be running on startup. So this is a, the Docker file. In the next video, I'll show you how we can run this from the command line. In the previous video, I showed you how to uh, create this Docker file. And in this video, we'll show you how to actually build and run the image. Now, I'm going to be staying on the same branch here. You can see uh, down on the bottom of the IDE, I'm still on the GitHub branch of Docker base. I'm only, only going to be doing demonstration here of the runtime application. And I'll be running this right from uh, IntelliJ. IntelliJ does have a terminal that you can bring up. And let me clear that message. And here you can see that I am uh, in the root of the uh, project. Now, one very uh, important thing here is the way Docker build command works. It will work from the current directory and down. So you can't go up. Uh, that is a security thing. And I actually found that out by the hard way. And it uh, took me a little bit to, to figure that little bit out. So here in the readme, you can see that I've got a couple commands here. So I got Docker build minus F. I'll be putting this in the readme for your reference so that you'll have, have access to this command. So here, let's go ahead and do, just make sure Docker is running. So if you do Docker PS, you can see that I do have a Postgres image running. Uh, that is perfectly fine. That won't uh, bother us. So I'm going to do a Docker build. Now for this to work, uh, you can see that I have my target directory exploded and that the jar is there. So you do need to run Maven package before running this. Otherwise, it, it will not work. So I'm going to do docker build minus F, and I'm going to say from here, go, go source, main, and I'm just hitting the, the tab key for the autocomplete. You can see the Docker file. Uh, so that minus F tells the file that we want to build. And because I'm running from the root of the project, I'll be able to access that because you can see in the Docker file, remember, I'm, I have that relative path. So 
I'm running from this point in the file system. So this will be able to traverse down and copy that file in. So if I ran from the Docker base folder, this would not be happy. So um, important aspect there. So that's setting the file. And then I want to do minus T. I'm going to give this a, a tag, wrong window. And here I am going to do KBE rest, like so. Go ahead and tag that. And Docker build. And I see my mistake. I forgot to say current directory there at the end. So now we can see that we went out and we uh, built it. It actually built fairly quick. And the first time you run it, I've already built a couple times. So the OpenJDK, that image is already there. So uh, it's pretty lightweight for this to uh, go ahead and build. So we're saying from, I didn't have to download that from the internet. The actual copy and stuff that went uh, fairly quick. Now let's go ahead and run that. You can see I, I set up the second man here for running it. Oh, let me clear the screen. I can say docker run. And I'm just going to say minus P. Uh, 80, 80, that's going to map 80, 80 to the local host. And we'll do KBE rest. And I'm not going to use the minus D flag. I put, put the minus D flag there in the command because I, I want to go ahead and observe the, the startup log. So I'm just going to be starting this up. And we'll go ahead. You can see that uh, I'm monitoring the logs. And that is now coming up. We can see that we have the, the normal Spring Boot startup. So now this application is up and running inside of a Docker context and a, a Docker image and is running locally on my host. Uh, port 8080 was exposed. So if I wanted to uh, curl from a command line or use Postman or something, I would be able to exercise the API at this time. So uh, I'm not going to be demonstrating that in this video. Like we can see that we are up and running. And I came up in the console mode interactively here and to shut it down. I just do control C and that will terminate the JVM. It goes away. If I do a Docker PS, you can see that now I have just Postgres running. And if I went to a, a second command line while that was running, the Docker PS would have shown that image up and running. Now, one thing that's very important about Docker and the way the Docker images work are layers, file system layers. Uh, as you get a lot of microservices out there, uh, you want to be very uh, aware of how the layers are working together and interacting together. A very nice feature of Spring that was introduced, I think it was in Spring Boot 2.3, if memory serves me correctly, is being able to do a layered approach. So we're going to break that out break out our, our application into layers so we'll have a layer for all those common dependencies and the stuff that doesn't change very much and then another layer for our application the stuff that does change the stuff that doesn't change is going to be a, a big amount of data stuff that's changing in our application is going to be much smaller so when we're doing deployments the stuff that doesn't change doesn't get uh, deployed again and again and again here we are going to be much more efficient so I'm going to show you how to use Spring Boot layers, how to configure our Docker build file to go ahead and utilize these layers. So this is a, a really important stuff, especially as, as we start getting into uh, more production environments where we have applications that are being deployed and evolved and deployed again. So we're doing releases of those applications. This is going to make your life a lot easier, at least your DevOps guys, a lot easier as uh, you produce, uh, move over to containerized environments. Okay, up on the screen you can see that I have uh, Chrome up and uh, I am actually at my blog. So this is an article I, I wrote about a year ago on using Spring Boot Layer. So this is a really cool feature uh, available with Spring Boot. If you see the article here, I talk about how Docker itself works. So remember, as we build that image, we are going to be building layers in that image. So the JRE 
base image that we're using. And that's going to have a collection of immutable file system layers. And uh, I kind of think of these as effectively as a tarball with a hash. So every time you add something, it's a new tarball with a hash that is getting generated. So the Spring Boot layer is a, actually a fairly clever idea uh, because if you, let's say you have a, a Docker host that has a bunch of microservices on it. And when you start getting into larger uh, Spring or any Java application, when you start bringing in things like uh, Hibernate and uh, some of the more advanced type stuff, you get a large bundle of dependencies. So you can easily have a, a 200 meg image but it's all jar files. And what happens is this big fat jar that you're stuffing into your uh, Docker image, there's no way your application is only going to be a small teeny part of that. And there's no way for the Docker build system to distinguish from that. So what this does is we uh, build effectively uh, multiple layers in that spring application. So uh, chances are, as you're doing some type of continuous deployment, your application is going to be changing. The uh, spring dependencies are going to be fairly stable. I mean, it depends on how often you are releasing or updating spring. Uh, I know some organizations that they'll get out on a spring version and because it is so large across their applications, they might only upgrade once a year. So their spring dependencies are going to be fairly stable for a year. So every deployment that they do, if they broke out to the layers, they wouldn't be redeploying those. So on the Docker host, once a layer is there, it's not going to get downloaded again. So if we break out all the spring uh, dependencies into its own layer, that layer will get reused over and over and over when we do a new deployment with the application, the application changes, and that is going to be just a small fraction of what's actually changing there. We put that into its own separate layer, then that application is only changing. So if you are running a larger system in production and doing a continuous deployment, you can see how this is going to have significant savings coming up. So in this video, I'm, or in this section of the course, I'm going to show you how to enable it, give you a little preview. We are going to be adding in a Maven configuration, and then we are going to be adding in the dependency. So here you can see that we are setting up layers, and the way Spring did it, we have dependencies, Spring Boot uh, Loader, snapshot dependencies. So if you have any snapshot versions on dependent projects, those will get put in, and then uh, your application. So chances are these two here, the top two folders, those layers will get converted into layers. Those will be pretty static as far as your deployments. And then the second two, the smaller dependencies, if you have any snapshot, personally, I don't think you should be deploying snapshot versions to it, anything, but that is just my opinion. And then you also have the application. That's where your Spring Boot application, the, the much smaller uh, component is going to be living. So we will be stepping through that. Uh, I'll show you how to set up the Spring Boot layer tools, as well as uh, we will be doing a multi-stage Docker build. In this video, I want to toggle over to IntelliJ, and what we'll do is we will add in this little piece of configuration right here to our Spring Boot Maven plugin. And you do have to be on Spring Boot 2.3 or higher. This just came out about a year ago. So if you are on a previous version, that Spring Boot Maven plugin will not support this. I think you probably can add in that, that little bit of configuration and it'll probably just ignore it. So but then you might be mystified why it doesn't work. So I'm going to jump over to IntelliJ and we'll go ahead and add that in. So I'm in IntelliJ. I'm going to go into the Maven Palm and I am on a branch called Layered Maven. And here you can see I have the Spring Boot Maven plugin, the excludes. I want to come up here. I just grabbed configuration and then layers. I copied that from my blog. So we are uh, adding in configuration layer enable true. That is going to, by default, uh, enable it. I, default is not enabled. And then we are going to be including the layered tools, and that is going to come up into the build file. We will uh, address the multi-stage build file in the next video. Okay, in this video, we're going to go ahead and configure the Docker file for a layered build. I'm going to collapse that down, 
And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another folder called Docker. And this will come into play later on in this course where we'll be using a build tool with Maven to build Docker. So I'm just going to make that uh, Docker and we'll come in and add in a Docker file. Go ahead and add this to Git. And, and normally you wouldn't have two different folders for Docker. You'd only have one Docker file. But for the purposes of the course, I want you to be able to compare and contrast between having a, a slim, regular, traditional Docker file and then also the layered Docker file. So now we are actually building the layered Docker file. And what I want to do is I want to come in and we this is going to be a multi-stage build, meaning that we will have uh, two Docker images start up so one will build and we're going to be using that to run a command to uh, extract out the layers and then the second one is going to be the actual docker file that we're using for our image and we'll take the layers from the first one and copy those over so let's take a little closer look as to what we're doing here again we just need that and we are going to call this as a builder so that is we're using this as a a builder image Again, work dirt is going to be application is just fine. And here I'm going to use the add command. Add and copy are very similar. And here I'm going to say target. We're going to get to the uh, directory a little bit different. And again, we want to take that jar file. And that's going to be KBE. So that is going to add that in. And here, what we want to do is say run Java minus D jar mode equals tools. And oh, I need to do dot slash there. And if I mistyped something, we're going to copy it over. So we're going to say minus jar. So this is a Java command. We are saying use the layer tools to extract out the layers. So that's all we want from this first builder. So inside this image, it's going to start up as a container. And it's going to take in and will add in that target, the jar file. And we are using the layer tools to extract out those layers. Now we're going to say from open JDK, we'll use the same one, JRE slim. And we can use application, it's just fine. And now we're going to say copy. And actually, I'm going to copy this over from my working notes. It's going to speed up. I don't think you guys want to see me type all this out. So I'm going to cut and paste this in. So now we can see that we're saying copy from builder. So that's doing a reference to this image, we're saying from builder, from the directory application, dependencies. And we're going to bring those into our application. So this here is the first container that we're starting up. And then this is the uh, image that we are building. And note here that we have the four layers that we are copying. So we have dependencies, spring bootloader, snapshot dependencies, which is typically going to be empty, then the application, and then the entry point. And the entry point now we are going to use the spring boot loader, the jar launcher. So uh, slightly different. That's what uh, allows all the class paths and stuff to get reassembled in this. And before we uh, actually try to build this, remember uh, here we added in that Maven configuration to do the layers. We want to do a clean on our project. Now we can say go ahead and do a package step. Now package things up with the new layers being built. And while that's building, we want to do this. So I'm giving you that Docker command, and now it's not Docker base, it's just going to be Docker. And so it's the same command, so I'm going to copy that command, and we'll take that into terminal. So now, rather than Docker base, we are going Docker, Docker file, and we'll tag that to KBE rest again. And you can see that we did have everything build properly. 
And you, you can see here that we are doing the uh, multiple stages of the copy and then writing the image. And you can see that's coming up cache. That's because I, I ran up uh, previously in my, my testing. If anything changed, uh, it would have changed there. Uh, just double checking everything. And now if we do Docker PS, you can see that I still just have Postgres running. And let's do a, a spec on this. We can do Docker history. And that'll be KBE rest. That is our tag. And here, what you can see, this is a history of that image. And these lines down here, that, that is all from the base image. So that is from the uh, JRE image. So you can see that that's got a number of layers. Now we have a work of application. And here you can see the actual dependency. So our dependencies, so that uh, 41 meg, that's a, a good chunk of uh, data. That is all our, uh, that's the fat jar dependency. So all the various jars, and that's actually pretty slim for a Spring Boot project. So as you get into larger projects and having more complex applications, that can grow significantly. And then our, our Spring Boot loader, that is pretty light snapshots. And then there's our application. You can see that's only 90 kilobytes. So if we were deploying this, running multiple versions of our application, deploying that over and over and over, uh, rather than having all this uh, get copied into a single image, now these files here are going to be staying the same. And they'll get reused. So if I have four applications running on the JRE, these are all going to get reused automatically because we're using that JRE image. If we have the exact same dependencies, these would get reused, and then only this one is going to be changing. So very, very important. This, um, if you start living with Docker on machines, uh, you do realize that uh, if you are tight on disk space, it can really <laughs> chew up a lot of disk space. And this is a way to really make your uh, disk utilization by Docker a lot more efficient. So this is going to be a lot more efficient for building and deploying applications in either a test or some type of production deployment environment. So the layers that the Spring Boot team came up with, it's a pretty clever way of saving yourself a lot of disk space and a lot of ongoing maintenance and having to go back and, and clean up the old layers that you may have on your system. Now there's a number of different ways that we can actually build our Docker images. Maven is a very popular build tool for building your Java Java projects such as Spring Boot, so it's widely used in the enterprise. We can also leverage that in a Docker context as well. So we're going to go in and look at adding in a plugin to Maven to help uh, automate our build. So if we are getting into a CI CD type environment, uh, having a common build tool capable of producing our artifacts, not only just the fat Spring Boot jar, but an actual Docker image from our, directly from our build is going to become very important. In this section of the course, I'm going to show you exactly how to configure Maven to produce Docker images. So when it comes to working with Docker and building images from within a Docker context, you do have a, a number of different options. One very popular plugin for a long time was the Fabric 8 Maven plugin. You can see here that uh, I have that on the screen and it's uh, been deprecated. And that just happened about six months ago. So I'm recording in uh, May of 2021. So th this is a fairly recent change at the time of recording that this was a uh, deprecated. Fabricate was a, a really cool project, but that project uh, is, is no more. And so that plugin has been deprecated. It's been picked up by, uh, by Eclipse, and it, it is now called JCube. So JCube is a, a very, very robust plugin. It was uh, basically a branch of the Fabricate Maven plugin. This is where all the active development is happening. JCube uh, works with not only Docker, but Kubernetes and OpenShift. It has a lot of very robust features. And I'm going to not use this one right now. Everything is very, very similar, but I'm going to be using a different Fabricate plugin called the Docker Maven plugin. And uh, there's very easy to get confused as to which uh, Fabricate 
Maven plugin we're talking about, the Docker Maven plugin. This, at the time of recording, is still active. It's still in the Fabric 8 repository. You can see here Fabric 8 IO, Docker Maven plugin. We're still getting commits. There was just a, a release done uh, just a month or so ago, uh, so on April 4th. This is still active. The core difference is this is a, a lighter, uh, simpler plugin, and it only works with Docker. So uh, only uh, utilizes Docker. And you can see here we do have a number of options here. We can start, stop, build images. And you can see a number of things here. We can even watch uh, for changes and automatically rebuild them. So there's a, a lot that we can do here. If you needed to run integration tests, bring up a container uh, for an integration test, uh, you could utilize this plugin. We are not going to be covering uh, all the features here. We're primarily going to be looking at uh, two pieces of this uh, to build images. We want to be able to automate our build process using Maven and then push those images up to Docker. But I did want to take a moment, uh, talk about this plugin, the capabilities of it. It does give you very nice integration between Maven and Docker. So we are interested in building Docker images. And what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to toggle over to IntelliJ and show you how to start configuring this plugin for use in, in our project. So let me jump over to IntelliJ. And the first thing we want to do is come in and uh, configure the plugin. So I'm going to put it in right here. So we want to do plugin, group ID, this is going to be IO. Fabric 8, and it brought in the wrong one. So we actually want the Docker Maven plugin. And I'm going to go with 0.341. I think that is the current release. Let me double check that. I'm going to toggle over to Chrome real quick. It's actually 35, so we'll update this to 35. We get the very latest there you can see that is uh, red because i do not have that locally so uh, when i do a, a build action this will be brought in so i go ahead and i'm going to click on refresh to tell intellij and you can see that we're downloading that now i want to add in some configuration for this the first thing we can do is we can do uh, verbose this will give us some additional uh, information out to the console. Nice to see what's happening. And we can build uh, one or more images. So there, there's a lot of, lot of things that you can do with this. We are going to use a Docker file build. You can actually use XML in the POM to declare uh, your build. Here we are going to, uh, I think it's simplest to use the, the Docker file, especially since we have a, a multi-stage Docker file here. We want that capabilities preserved. So we will go ahead and do that. And I'm going to say images, and then image. And we'll give this a name. You were calling it KB Rust, if I remember right. Now we need to declare a build element. And this is how we are actually going to be building our image. And what we need to do here is declare an assembly. And this works a lot like the uh, Maven assembly plugin at least according to the documentation. And we're adding in this line because what we want to do is it's going to be copying files around, and we'll take a look at that closer in the build process. So we're saying uh, descriptor ref artifact. And by default, remember, we uh, set up the source main Docker, Docker file. By default, it's going to be looking in that. So we are going to say Docker file. And if I wanted to use a different file name, I could declare it like this, but I don't need to. And then we can also do a tag of our image. So let's do tags. We can do multiple tags. Here we'll just declare one for the time being. Call that latest. Now, one very important thing that we do need to change in our Docker file, this is going to be copying files around. And what we want to do is come to our Docker file, and rather than target, we want to tell it Maven. So now... Uh, Fabricate, the Fabricate uh, Maven plugin is going to be running the build. It's going to be running in that context, and the plugin is going to copy files, and we'll take a, a quick look at that. So come back over here. All that looks correct. 
I'm going to do a refresh here, make sure that we can see that. I'm going to uh, disable our tests for right now, and we'll go ahead and do a clean. That deletes the target directory. We'll do a package. Let me resize some of these. You can see that our target directory is back. And typical build, this is the jar that we want to be including. So now I'm going to come over here under plugins. We can see Docker. And if I was running this from the command line, it'd be simply Maven Docker build. So I'm going to do the uh, Docker build. And the way this is working, I'm doing it in sequence. If we were running from a command line and we didn't have the target directory created, we'd have to do uh, maven package docker colon build. So, but right now we've already done the package step. I'm going to go ahead and run the build step. You can see that the build did go and complete successfully. And let's take a closer look here. So now we see under target, we have a docker KB rust, the name of our name of our image. And then you can see here under build maven and that that's why we had to set that there. So here we're running in this context. So now we need to tell it's going to be running in the context of the build folder. And that's where the, the Docker builder is going to be executing from. So that's why we need to change that uh, Maven because now our Docker file is now building from that location. So very important. So just to recap what we covered in this video, this is the specifically the Fabric 8 Docker Maven plugin that we added. And IntelliJ hasn't picked that up yet, but I'll go ahead and uh, correct that between the videos. And here are the configuration. I did add in verbose to give us a little more uh, chatter in the log so we can see the build steps happening. Otherwise, without the verbose, uh, we wouldn't see the image being built like that. Uh, we are giving the image a name of KBE Rust. Uh, basically, this assembly structure here, it tells the plugin to copy this uh, Maven artifact over. So it says, hey, copy that into the uh, build directory for us. We are specifying the Docker file to use. And by default, the plugin is going to be looking at source main Docker. And we're just saying the Docker file there. And we are applying one tag to the image that we're building of latest. And that, that will uh, get tagged. You can see right here in the uh, log output tag with latest. And if we wanted to specify multiple tags, we could do also do so here. Okay, currently we do have the image being built via Maven, but there's some things that we can do to make our life a little more easy as far as uh, managing a project. And right now, if we take a look at the uh, Docker file, we are utilizing the name of the artifact. So if we do a release, we change that uh, version, what's gonna ha have to happen is we are gonna have to go in and update this. So if we did uh, a release to uh, 01 or 02, uh, we'd have to go in and edit this file manually and not uh, something that we actually want to do. So what we can do is we can utilize Maven properties to control this. And rather than having the string here, we can uh, have it replaced with a Maven property at runtime. So I come in here like so, and I do a dollar sign squiggly like that. Now I can say project dot build dot final name. And this is a, a Maven property that's available at runtime. This is the name of the jar. So when we run this, if we change the version, that is going to get changed. So I can just take that and copy him right to here, like so. So that takes care of our, our build file. So there's a couple other things that we can uh, utilize this with uh, also. So let's come back to our Maven configuration here in the POM. And... One thing that we're doing here is we're setting it up as KBE Rust and a different convention that I like to use. So remember the uh, image coordinates if we're pushing up to Docker Hub are going to be our name. So in my case, I have a Docker Hub account called Spring Framework Guru. And then I want to give it a name. And the, the name I, I like to use here is from the project itself, the artifact ID. So the artifact ID, which is going to be the KBE Rust Brewery, that will all make it appended. So if I ever have to change the name here, that would change. I do like to have my repository reflecting that artifact ID name. Uh, now my Docker image as well will reflect that.
Then one additional thing that we can do here is we are tagging it. And let's say we're going through a release process or something like that. It'd be nice to have that version as well. So if I were to do a release to uh, 0 0.1 or 0 0.2, uh, we'd like to have a, a image with that. So what we can do here is, again, using a Maven property, we'll do project, and here we're just gonna say project version, and that will pick up the version property. So now when this runs, we will get not only tag to latest, but we'll also get the tag of version. And I don't have to rebuild everything, but I can come in here and run the build step and demonstrate this. So I'm just gonna come in and do Docker build. And we'll, Go ahead and expand this window out a little bit. So we can see that the, the build did go through successfully and everything worked properly. You can see here, uh, this line here, the property was uh, properly applied at runtime. So that got replaced at runtime. So rather than having that property string. It did in fact uh, work properly the, the way we expect it to. So now if I change versions and doing a release or something like that, that will automatically happen. And then here we can see also in the log output that we have the tag of latest and also the 001 dash snapshot. So now we have that image with uh, both tag of latest and snapshot. If I were to do a release, the tagged images will still be up in Docker Hub. The latest would get replaced, and then the 02 would be there, but 01 would still also be there. So this is a, a really handy way to version your images as you are doing releases with your Java projects. So let me minimize this and just recap exactly what I changed here. So I came into the Docker file, and for the file name, I'm now using a Maven property, so that will be picked up uh, as the file name changes. When we uh, change the versioning information, the file name will change, and now this will uh, work properly at runtime when we're building our project. And then also in the POM, I changed the name of it, so I'm now adding in my Docker Hub directory, as well as the I'm um, utilizing the artifact ID for the name. And then uh, in our build, we are also tagging it with the current version of the build. Okay, in this video, we are going to be pushing images up to Docker Hub. So you can see I have Docker Hub up on the screen here. If you want to follow along, you are going to need your own uh, Docker Hub account. They're free. Uh, it's free to register, free to use. So uh, if you want to follow along, obviously you're going to need your own because I'm not going to be sharing my credentials with the world here. So you can see here I have a, a number of uh, different images that are already up there. Uh, in this case, we are going to be pushing this up there for the first time. Once you have your credentials, we do need to do a configuration step for the uh, Maven plugin to pick things up. So here I have the plugin documentation some from uh, Fabric8. And we can see here that there are six different ways of defining the, the uh, credentials. So you can do system properties, uh, Docker username and password, registry username and password. You can do an auth config section in the plugin. Not too thrilled on that one because uh, right on the, the Palm file you'd have credentials. So that's probably not a very good idea. You can use OpenShift configuration. A very common one is uh, using the server tag in your uh, Maven under your home directory .m2 settings, uh, set up a server. So server with Docker Hub and then uh, the credentials. So that's a pretty straightforward way of doing that. And then finally, you can do a registry. You can see here a credentials helper under a hidden folder in your called Docker config JSON. That one I have not seen used, but I'm sure it is is used out there. So to follow along with this video, you will need to do both have a Docker Hub account and use one of these methods to uh, set up the credentials. Once you do that, have that, you will be able to authenticate with Docker Hub and you'll be able to push. So with that said, I'm going to come over to the command line now, or at least IntelliJ. And in IntelliJ, we do have the ability to bring up a terminal, which I'm going to do now. And what we can do here is say maven docker build docker push. So actually, if I was running this for the first time, if I wanted to run everything all together, I could do clean package. 
Docker build, Docker push. So that's going to run all of those together. So uh, let's go ahead and run that. And this is going to clean the project, uh, rebuild it, run our, our couple tests there. You can see the Spring Boot dialog coming up. And in a second here, we'll get into the uh, build phase. You can see here we are building the uh, image. And here, this is actually the push up to the registry. So you can see Docker push. It is pushing up the various file layers that we created. And that last one's going to be a little big. Glad I have somewhat of a, a speedy internet connection here. And you can see here, uh, we have uh, set everything thing up. So it has pushed up to Docker Hub now. We can see the uh, hash digest here of what was pushed up. Let's toggle back over to Chrome and come back over here to Docker Hub and go ahead and do a refresh of that. And we can see here is the KBE Rest Brewery. It wasn't there previously. Somehow we got three downloads. I'm not sure how that happened. So, uh, but we can see that this is now up inside of Docker Hub. We can see that we have the latest tag and also the snapshot as well. So that has now been pushed up to Docker Hub and is available for anybody that would like to use it.